All right, let's get started. So um, thank you all uh, very much for joining us here. We have a really exciting topic to share with you. We're going to be talking about the second largest crypto asset um, in the world of DeFi, decentralized finance, which uh, this year has gone um, very, very, very uh, popular and, and soon maybe even mainstream. Um, joining me uh, is uh, Lanra and Ellie from our research team. Um, I'm Haney Rashwan. Um, I'm one of the co-founders and CEO here at 21 Shares. Um, and we do these webinars periodically because education is super important to us. Uh, in this new and up and coming assets class, um, a lot of the concepts are, are things that we may not have heard of before. A lot of the uh, new technologies are both evolving at a very fast pace and sometimes relatively uh, complex in, in their constructions. So we hope to elucidate all of this for you. Um, we do it in a variety of ways. We have weekly newsletters, uh, monthly research reports, quarterly printed uh, uh, research reports, as well as uh, some of the things you're seeing here now with the with the webinar. So uh, I would invite everyone to go to 21shares.com slash research to check out all of the material and maybe sign up for a few of these. Covering um, what we're doing today, um, I'll talk to you uh, a little bit about who we are, uh, what we've done, uh, what we've done so far, um, and sort of how we've approached the crypto world. Um, following that, uh, my colleague Ellie will talk a little bit about Ethereum um, and dive in uh, on the world's second largest crypto asset. Um, he'll introduce us to the world of DeFi, uh, and what's going on with decentralized finance, why we think it's a really big deal, um, why, frankly, we think that um, all of the visions behind uh, what blockchain could offer to the financial world in evolution and disruption and innovation uh, could probably come from DeFi. Uh, and then uh, our other colleague, Lanra, will take it from there, uh, talking a little bit about uh, a couple of case studies of some very successful DeFi protocols and um, companies, as well as finally, how to uh, become a part of this, how to end up in investing in this burgeoning new uh, asset class of innovation. Um, at the very, very end, uh, we'll open it up for uh, some Q and A. Um, and so as, as we're going through all of this, think about anything um, that you may wanna ask, jot it down, and we would love to address it at the very end of the presentation. First, uh, just a little bit on, uh, on us as a firm. Uh, we are 21 shares. We are a, a Swiss issuer of crypto exchange traded products. Our mission is to, in a very safe, simple and institutional grade manner, offer greater accessibility to the crypto asset class. We have, um, let's go to the next slide so that we talk about products. Um, we have by far the most expensive product suite in, in the world with respect to crypto. We have uh, 11 products in total. Six are uh, single trackers, meaning they're tracking just one asset like Bitcoin or Ethereum. Um, we have four baskets or indexes uh, if you want to bet thematically on uh, certain strategies. And we have the world's only uh, listed in uh, inverse or short uh, if you wish to hedge or go short on the asset. Um, we've been doing this for a couple of years now. We listed the world's first uh, physically backed crypto exchange traded product back in November of 2018. That was HODL, which you see on the, uh, on the page here. Um, HODL gives you access to the entire crypto asset market with just a single share. Uh, you're able to purchase 75 to 80% exposure uh, of the total market. We've since obviously followed up with um, a bunch of other products that are available broadly in Swiss francs, euros, uh, US dollars, as well as GBP. Uh, and today we are listed on Deutsche Börse, uh, the six Swiss exchange, as well as Wiener Borsa and a few smaller exchanges. 
Um, that's it on uh, the company in terms of uh, our overall background and what we've done so far. Uh, with that, I would love to um, give it over to Ellie uh, to take us into what Ethereum is and what DeFi is. Thank you, Annie. Uh, so some of you may have heard of the name Ethereum, but do not know exactly what it is and how it is different from Bitcoin. And the objective of this presentation is to give you a concise overview of what Ethereum offers and why we believe at 21 shares that this is one of the most important innovations in the financial industry. So briefly, Ethereum is a world's computer designed to build decentralized applications with its own cryptocurrency called Ether. So entrepreneurs and companies building those applications pay in Ether for the use of the world's computer Ethereum. In other words, Ether is a fuel to the Ethereum platform and at 21 shares, we like to call Ether the digital oil. So onto the next slide to summarize, Ethereum is the world's computer. Ether is a cryptocurrency serving as a fuel to the Ethereum platform. And Bitcoin is different, different because Bitcoin is digital gold. So onto the next slide. Now as investors, you must be wondering what problems does Ethereum solve, right? So potentially Ethereum has a total addressable market of all the industries that could build services and products on the internet. But financial applications are the most dominant on Ethereum. And I'm sure some of you may have heard of the, of the name decentralized finance or DeFi, right? So DeFi is essentially the sector combining all these financial applications built on Ethereum. They offer different use cases enabling users to store and send crypto assets or borrow, earn interest, and invest without a bank. And it's very important to note that these applications are non-custodial, meaning that the crypto assets are stored on the Ethereum blockchain and therefore controlled by the users. So all the great innovations solve real problems, and Ethereum is no exception. With the current macroeconomic landscape of zero to negative interest rates and the lack of transparency in the traditional financial system, the DeFi applications brought to the market try to solve these issues, which are part of the building blocks of the third wave of the web, from centrally owned and managed applications to applications built on decentralized protocols like Ethereum. So onto the next slide, since the start of the year, the DeFi ecosystem has experienced a massive growth with almost 200 startups, billions of dollars worth of value transferred and is disrupting markets such as trading, lending, remittances, and more. This innovation provides 24-7 auditability, transparency, and is also reducing censorship, cost, and center counterparty risk. But remember, none of this would be possible without Ethereum. And this is why Ether is the second largest crypto asset in the world with a daily trading volume of $13 billion, which is 41x that of the next competitor alongside more than 1 million transactions processed on the Ethereum blockchain. So onto the next slide, at 21 shares, we like to use analogies uh, so that people can understand what they invest in. So the closest analogy to invest in Ethereum is having ownership in the entire Silicon Valley ecosystem where companies solve substantial problems with billions of dollars of addressable market. And investors across the world have started to recognize the considerable value of Ethereum with an exponential growth, as you can see on the charts, in its price with more than 180% since January. And onto the next slide, since we are currently living uh, with a very invisible virus uh, with the COVID-19 pandemic, this is the best test for Ethereum to see whether it is performing well compared to the S&P 500 gold oil uh, or the Euro stock, uh, stock 50. And as you can see, uh, Ethereum is experiencing more than 200% returns since uh, March 12th, when uh, there was a flash crash uh, due to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, so, which, which really shows why Ethereum is one of the most important investments uh, since the start of the year and obviously since it's, 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 it is inception. So, my colleague Lonwe now is going to cover four important projects in the DeFi sector so that you can have a feel of uh, what is offered exactly uh, in this industry. Thank you. Thank you, Ellie. Uh, so just to recap, so Ellie's talked a lot about what Ethereum is and getting given an overview of DeFi, decentralized finance. 
But we think the next best thing to help you understand what exactly decentralized finance is and how it ties back into our valuation thesis for Ethereum is by focusing on specific use cases and some of the most popular decentralized finance applications that have been built thus far. So we're focused on four uh, in the following case study. Number one is Tether, which is a crypto asset called a stable coin, whose job it is to remain pegged to the US dollar. So currently one Tether is equivalent to one US dollar and Tether as a token exists and is powered and settles on the Ethereum blockchain. Uniswap is the second project we wanna focus on. And Uniswap is a decentralized exchange or DEX for short for Ethereum based tokens, which allows people to transfer tokens peer to peer without the need for an exchange like Coinbase or Binance. Uh, the third project we wanna focus on is called Yearn Finance. Yearn is quite interesting because the project uh, only became fully decentralized about two months ago and is quite a lot newer than some of these other projects, but it, it is an automated asset management platform which allows users to deposit a amount of assets into the platform. And then the platform will automatically seek to generate the highest yields for those assets. So especially in a, as Ellie said, a, an environment where there are pretty much negative or very low interest rates, something like, something like Yearn has often served a very helpful purpose to allow users to get higher yields. And then finally, we have Aave, which is a lending platform to earn interest on deposits and borrow crypto, which allows users to earn interest on deposits and to also borrow crypto assets. So this allows users to borrow and earn and lend assets in a totally decentralized way without relying on a third party counterpart party, such as a bank or something like BlockFi, for example. Uh, so just to give you a bit of a understanding of what the scale of these projects are and, and thus the scale of DeFi, we have some of the key metrics for each of these projects. And very quickly after looking at these key metrics, we get a better understanding of how large DeFi is and how as a result of its largeness, this will be over the long term quite value creative for Ethereum as an, as an asset. So Tether, which is the leading stable coin within the crypto ecosystem and which is settled on Ethereum, transfers on an average day about 3.5 billion US dollars worth of value. So on average, 3.5, about 3.5 worth billion dollars of Tether is transferred from one party to another party, often done totally on the Ethereum blockchain. We can compare this to another very well known FinTech company, which has, you know, over the last 20 years or so, accrued about over $200 billion of value. And I think the market cap is within that range now. And PayPal, has only managed to, in Q2, do about $2.94 billion worth of daily transaction volumes. So which is interesting is the fact that Tether, only six years old and totally decentralized or based on a decentralized platform, has managed to outgrow even that of PayPal, despite the fact Ethereum, which is the platform it's built on, only has a value maybe one-fifth or one-sixth of PayPal's market cap. So this shows how one of DeFi's current use cases such as stable coins leads has led to a kind of a massive undervaluing of Ethereum as a platform when you look at the fundamentals uh, of, of Tether, for example. And then moving on to Uniswap. So Uniswap, especially for the last few months, has become the premier platform for users that want to swap and exchange and trade tokens. And Coinbase, despite being perhaps the largest crypto asset exchange or second largest or at least the largest in the West, hasn't actually had, has actually had lower transaction at daily volumes and even Uniswap, which goes to show that a totally decentralized and open source decentralized uh, exchange can even outmatch a heavily funded and well capitalized centralized exchange because the value proposition of having a decentralized and open source and trust minimized platform is very obvious to the users that uh, want to use Uniswap. And then moving on to Yarn Finance. So as we described it, we described Yarn Finance as a asset manager that seeks to optimize people's yields. And within a few months, it's managed to nearly accrue over $900 million worth of total value locked or assets under management. And while that you know, perhaps is smaller than some of the largest funds in the space, given the nascence of its technology and the fact that the whole project was only built by a few individuals in a few months, uh, it's quite impressive and goes to show how much more growth there is in projects such as Yearn. And then finally moving on to Aave. So Aave also has a similar number in terms of 1.19 billion 
in total value locked or assets under management, which shows that lending, which is a core, core part of traditional finance and kind of drives a lot of growth in traditional finance, is also a very important part of uh, DeFi. And we think all these numbers will likely continue to get bigger over the years, but these numbers as they are help show how much value Ethereum currently fulfills as a platform for the facilitation of DeFi and decentralized finance applications. But despite DeFi's growth over the last few years, it's very obvious that there's a lot more room for it to grow. So this chart compares the gross market value of Ethereum's DeFi-based tokens and DeFi-based apps compared to the gross market value of OTC derivatives. Uh, so Ethereum's DeFi tokens are worth about 50 billion uh, in gross market value compared to o the OTC derivative market, which by some estimates by the Bank of International Sentiments is worth around $12 trillion. Uh, and we think in the long term, an increasing amount of financial derivatives and assets of all kind, and an increasing amount of financial activity will be carried out in the Ethereum blockchain. But currently, given as you can see that if the Ethereum blockchain's gross market value is only a hundredth of the OTC derivatives market, it helps show how much more of Ethereum's TAM or total addressable market there is for Ethereum to grow into. And this is key to our long-term value thesis for, for Ethereum. We think currently right now, there's a lot of really interesting activity occurring on its blockchain, namely within DeFi. But we think over time, Ethereum will continue to swallow more of traditional finance and tra traditional finance activity, which is extremely bullish for the long-term prospects of Ethereum as an asset for the facilitation of decentralized finance technology. So before we end and move on to Q&A, I want to end with a quote from one of the leading Bitcoin and Ethereum as advocates within the space, Andreas Antonopoulos. So he said, the Ethereum platform enables developers to build powerful decentralized applications with built-in economic functions, while providing high availability, auditability, transparency, and neutrality. It also reduces or eliminates censorship and reduces certain counterparty risks. And this is quite key to why people have decided to build DeFi applications. There's an inherent demand for censorship resistant and decentralized finance, financial vehicles and financial assets. And all those kind of demand and all that kind of demand has currently been funneled to Ethereum. And we think the total value of that demand will continue to increase over time. And that is why we're extremely bullish on Ethereum in the long time and continue to see DeFi as a key area for innovation and growth within the, within the crypto asset industry. And finally, to end before I pass it back to Hani, so the 21 Shares Ethereum ETP currently offers the best way for investors across Europe to get access to the growth potential of Ethereum. And we are listed on a number of exchanges such as Deutsche Börse, Six Swiss, Borsa Stuttgart, BX, BX Swiss, and uh, Vienna. Uh, and as we show on this page, these are some of the brokers which you can use to get access to our products. Uh, feel free to reach out to us if you want to learn more about Ethereum and our investment thesis for it. Uh, but thank you for listening. I'll pass it back on to Hani so we can start the Q&A. Thank you.